Hi, and welcome to the Monopoly tutorial for 2XO3, 2GO3. Uh, I've got this question here. I'm going to do this in probably three pieces. Uh, there's one of these, and then there's two uh, um, pricing theory questions that I'm going to go over, um, as well as a Silas postulate question for this course. Uh, so the first question is just basically how to do a Monopoly problem and get the quantity restriction that they use to maximize profits. So Paul has created a small company that manufactures Monopoly board games in various themes for small markets. Paul's cost structure is as follows. Uh, total cost is 2y squared minus 12y plus 10. He identifies that usually at a market he faces demands described by quantity equals 30 minus 1 half times price. Suppose Paul produces economics themed Monopoly board games for a flea market under the assumption that he will be in a perfectly competitive environment. How many will he produce? And then suppose that uh, he has a monopoly. Uh, what is the deadweight loss, and how many does he produce then? Okay, so go ahead and pause it, uh, attempt these problems, and I will do the solutions. Okay, so you're going to have to bear with me because I haven't actually prepared this one uh, ahead of time, so you'll get to see all the possible mistakes that I make because that does happen. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is what is the perfectly competitive outcome. Okay, so perfect competition. Right, so as you know, we set marginal cost equal to price. And you also, um, those of you who are enterprising and actually attempted this, might notice that I changed the Y's to Q's. Um, I have no idea how often I see on a test that someone has gotten fooled by variable illusion and the Q in one problem is actually representing quantity, whereas in the other equation it's a Y that's representing quantity. Uh, quantity is quantity, it doesn't matter what um, variable you use to do that. Okay, so we've got that price is 4 times quantity minus 12, so let's just plug that into our demand function two equations, two unknowns. Okay. I'm uh, just doing all these lines for completeness sake. There we go. And then I'm going to plug my 12 back into my demand function. So 12 now equals 30 minus 1 half p, right? Solving for p, of course. Okay, let's just get rid of the negative signs. And then we can see that p. 36. Okay, so we've solved it in perfect competition, which should be very familiar to you by now. If it's not, I suggest you practice more. Okay, so let's look at the monopoly case. I'm just going to draw this line here to kind of isolate the two. Okay, so the first step with the monopoly problem, and I'm going to start going a little slower because I want you to actually follow along, is to create a revenue function. Okay, and we know that revenue equals price times quantity. Okay, but I don't want to have two choice variables in my revenue function, right? So I need another equation that relates price and quantity, and luckily for me, I have the demand function right here. Uh, unfortunately, since I want to choose quantity, uh, I need to rearrange it into inverse, or sorry, regular market demand. It's in inverse market demand already. So I'm going to have uh, QD minus 30 equals negative 1 half P. Okay, multiply everything by negative 2. 60 minus 2Q equals P. Okay, so that's the starter, that's the starting point for my revenue function. Okay. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and make an actual revenue function. And that's just going to be this expression we got for p multiplied by q, right? So that's just price times quantity, but I've got one expression for price, but it's in terms of quantity, so my only variable here is q. Okay, so now I want marginal revenue, which, if you remember from your first uh, uh, test, is just the change in revenue or total revenue with respect to quantity. Okay, so that's going to be 60 minus 4q. And that is from taking this q, multiplying it through, so I have 60q minus 2q squared, which becomes 60 minus 4q when I take the derivative. So that's my marginal revenue. Okay, now I want to look at marginal cost, right? I have marginal cost from before, it's 4q minus 12. So the optimality condition, and this is for any firm, it just so happens that perfectly competitive firms have marginal revenue equal to price is that marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So 4q minus 12 equals 60 minus 4q. Okay, so this is 8q, and this is from one of my tutorials from last year, so I know that the numbers work out pretty well. q equals 9. Okay, so we've got our quantity, right? And now to find our price, we plug that right back into the demand function. So we have that 9 equals 30 minus 1 half price. All right, so negative 21 equals negative 1 half price. Price is 42. Okay, so he produces three fewer board games and he charges six dollars more per board game. Okay, now we want to think about the deadweight loss. So let's actually look at what this market looks like. Right. So we have an upward sloping marginal cost. Right. It starts down in negative 12 somewhere, right, is the intercept. It goes up like that. So that's our marginal cost. Okay. And our demand starts at 30 and goes down by one half p. So let's draw it as something like this. And I just got an email. Okay, so this is our demand. Okay, so we know that our competitive equilibrium is where marginal cost equals demand. There. So this actually is right price and this is quantity, same as everything else. Well, this is actually cost slash price, dollars, whatever you want to think about it. So let's draw in our marginal revenue line, right? And that's everywhere below the demand line, something like that. It probably doesn't look like that because it's half the slope and that's much less than half the slope, or twice the slope, and that's much more than twice the slope. So we are looking for the deadweight loss, right? And if we think that this is the... Um, competitive equilibrium, and this is the monopoly equilibrium, right, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, right, that's the quantity, and we take it up to the price line, okay, so that's the price, and our deadweight loss is all these transactions here where the people are willing to pay more than it costs the monopolist to make it, but he's not willing to sell it. Okay, so that area, again, we just want one half base times height, right? Well, we know this is monopoly quantity, and this is market quantity. I'm just going to call this Q mon for monopoly, and that's Q star for market. Then one half base times height. is uh, Q star minus Q mon over 2, right? And we have 
have to multiply that by this difference in price here, which would be the height of this triangle, which is the marginal cost at uh, 9 units. Okay. Well, let's plug in marginal cost into our 9 units here. So 4 times 9 minus 12. Okay. And that equals 36 minus 12 is 24. Okay, so if I plug in here 24, and this price up here that is the market price is 42, right? It's 42 minus 24, which is right, P mon minus marginal cost. Okay, and so Q star minus Q monopoly is three, so we have three halves times, and then 42 minus 24 is 18, 18. Okay, so that's 3 times 9, that's 27. So dead weight loss is 27. Okay, and that's the solution to this problem, so I'll be back in just a second. Well, you'll see another video with uh, some of the application problems for price discrimination.